Hi, this is Danielle from Cyclotch. In this session, we will learn how to perform a simple data analysis in Clojure. We will begin with a raw data set and we will end with a published report or a blog post, if you will. The problem we will look into is about people's movement in a city. We will ask about the distribution of hours uh, in which people tend to use the bikes. And specifically what we'll ask is, can we distinguish the weekends from weekdays in terms of this hour distribution? You know, possibly in the weekends, people tend to use their bikes in different hours uh, than what they would do in a weekday. And the data set we will use is a nice data set of bike trips in Chicago. We've been looking into this data set recently in our study sessions, and maybe you know this closure data scrapbook, and there you can find a post about Chicago bike trips. And there, if you look inside, uh, you can see some analyzers we've performed about the way these bike trips are uh, spread over time throughout the day and in space throughout, you know, over the map do they tend to cluster in certain patterns. Today we'll not do all of that. We will just look into time. but. We will use the same data set, and that is the Cyclistic Bike Share 2023 data set shared on the Kaggle website. This data set uh, is big. Let us download it and then we look uh, inside. Or maybe I'll keep it here. And while it is downloading, we can begin by creating a closure project where we will analyze the data. So I'll create a directory. Uh, we will call it Nodge Getting Started. What is Nodge? Nodge is a recent project by Cyclodge. It is a collection of a few of the famous libraries for data and science enclosure, you know, data processing, data, data visualization, collected together and uh, in, a, in a recommended way, so to speak, with some documentation and convenience layers, which we recommend as the practices. It is still work in progress, but you are encouraged to look into knowledge and here today, we will use it a little bit in our project. So let us begin our closure project by, you know, opening an editor. We can uh, open um, Visual Studio Code today, uh, because why not? And I'm opening it in the current directory we've just created, which is still empty. Uh, yeah, so see. Um, yeah, well, we can close the shell already, and uh, yeah, so so uh, maybe let us see what uh, about the data we have been download downloading. Uh, yeah, it is there, right? We can move it to our current directory. It is a zip file, and we're moving it, and. We have this file. Let us unzip and see what we have inside. All right, so you see many CSV files. Let us look into one of them. So these CSV files are just data sets of bike trips. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit like that. So you see each row in the data is a bike trip. It has a start and an end, which have timestamps and also geographical coordinates. 
And today we just handle everything as a time series. So we only care about time steps for this session. And uh, let us make a, a data directory and move this file, uh, this one file, which is about one month of bike trips of this bike sharing company. Uh, let us move it into our data directory. And, you know, I'm just erasing all the other ones uh, because one month is enough for today. And I'll also compress it uh, so that it takes less space. So now here is our project. We have one file, a gzipped CSV file of bike trips. And we're going to be analyzing this file. So now when we have our data file, we can start our closure project. We will create a new file, which will be our dependencies file. And let us save it as depths.edin. And in this dependencies file, we will add two dependencies. One of them will be notch. And let us check the version of Nodge. You see, I have it on enclosures. You can search for project enclosures and you find Nodge. And you see it is version 1 alpha 31. Yes, Nodge is this collection of libraries and recommended practices for data and science. And the other dependency we are adding is Clay, a tool for data visualization and literate programming using namespaces as notebooks. Oh, here is the clay page if you wish. So it is 2 alpha, 2 beta, 3. Right. So these are our dependencies, Nodge and clay. And now we can start the REPL. Calva start the project REPL and connect. And we're using depths.eden, and in a moment we'll have the REPL running. And then we can start creating our closure source. So we'll create a directory called src, and in that directory I'll create an index.clj file. I call it index because it is the main page of our report, so it is convenient to call it index. And yeah, so that is the index namespace. And uh, we will require one namespace for now, which is the main tablecloth API. Tablecloth is this famous table processing library built on top of the amazing TechML dataset. And you see, I'm loading it now. And the reason we have tablecloth is that it is part of this Nodge collection, right? And in the Nodge documentation, you can have various examples combining tablecloth with other nice stuff. And yeah, so we have tablecloth. So let us try to read our data as a tablecloth data set. So our data has a path, right? It is a file data. This compressed CSV file, and we can read it with table cloth as a data set. And in a moment, we'll add a few arguments to kind of uh, customize the way we process the data or the way we pass it as a data set. So let us print it for now. And you see, yes, you have a table cloth data set. And this table cloth data set is what, it is what we could read from this compressed CSV file. So now, uh, you know, the tablecloth dataset is conveniently also a closure map, right? You can ask, is it a map? And the answer is true. The tablecloth dataset is a map. And what are, what are the keys? The keys are the column names, right? So, right, these are the column names, which are strings. and could we make them as keyword as we like in closure? So yes, you have this key function argument, and you can say 
please I apply the keyword function to all the keys of this map, of this data set. And you see now there are keywords. So, you know, when you have a map with keywords, you can use the keywords to fetch the values of the map. So, for example, here is the started at key, which is the started at column. Right, you can see it here, and we can fetch it. So what is it? It is a column of strings with many, many values. All the starting times of bike trips in one month as strings. So you see the values of this map we have here are columns, and columns have types, and this column is a column of strings. And you may say, oh, but couldn't we have them as uh, some date, time, uh, values, not strings, right? These are date and time. So could we make it more suitable for the type of data we have? So yeah, you can provide the parser function. And the way you provide it is for certain column names. So I use the string column name uh, because we haven't uh, turned it into a keyboard at this phase of passing yet started at and then you need to provide the the pattern the, the parser so one way to provide it is to say this is local date time and it has a date time pattern and looking into these strings we see oh this is y y y y for year and then month and day hour minute second so let us try now and see what kind of column we are receiving by this passing process oh something is not right oh apologies I forgot, uh, this should be a map from the column name to the parser specification and if you think about it, it makes sense. So that is right now. Right, oh yeah. Right, and so what we have been doing is passing a CSV file, a compressed CSV file as a tablecloth data set or technically a TechML data set, data set which is the underlying structure and we applied some passing to those date columns and you see now the column we're receiving from the passing is a column of local date time. Let us apply it also to the other uh, date time column which is ended at for completeness, so again, same parser definition, and let us also kind of print the whole data set, see that it looks okay, right? great, nice. Let's give it a name, def raw trips, these are bike, tri bike trips, right? And maybe let us say def ones, because we don't want it to be read from the file every time we evaluate the namespace. Great, so we have oh, raw trips. Great. And maybe to free some memory, we can say def raw trip. The previous name I mistakenly gave, let us define it to be nil so that the previous value is garbage collected. Great. Can we print raw trips? Yes, it is a tablecloth dataset. Now we can start processing. So let us remember what our question was. We were wondering about the hours in which people tend to use their bikes, how they are distributed over the day. And we were, were hoping to compare the weekends with the week days in terms of this hour distribution. 
So let us add a column of this hour and also add a column of the week, of the day of week, right? So let us do that. So we will define a new data set. Let us call it processed trips with some additional data processing. We begin with the raw trips and we use tablecloth add columns. And you know, tablecloth, it has an, an amazing documentation and you can look those functions up and see many useful examples. And I think you will enjoy looking there. So we're adding an hour column. And this column will be a transformation of the started at column, right? So to have the necessary transformations, we'll use uh, techml date, sorry, we'll use tech data type, which is the underlying array processing uh, library. Uh, technically, it is called D type next these days because the, it's the next generation of uh, array processing. And it has a date time namespace, which is so nice. Many nice functions in there. So let us use that namespace. So when we're adding a column, there are certain ways to define the new column you're adding. One way to do that is as a transformation, as a function that takes a whole data set and returns a column. And then it is applied to the data set at the hand. So it, it, it is a function taking a whole data set and returning, oh, sorry, and returning a column. What it does is taking the column, taking the data set, fetching the started at column, which is the one we wish to process, and applying some data processing to it. So date, time, long temporal field, hours. Long temporal field is this handy function that can take a whole array or column in our case and process it with some, some time transformation. In this case, converting it to hours. So let us define, or oh, maybe let us before Defining process trips, let us just see how it looks. Uh, oh, sorry, just some indentation. Is it okay? Oh no, what did I break? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, I'm not used to this editor, but yeah, never mind. So, uh, let us define the process trips and see how they look. Um, what keys do they have? many keys and you see a new key the hour right and let us check what is the hour column how does it look is a column of numbers and these numbers look like hours right so this went okay let us add the day of week in a similar fashion Every time I'm learning this editor again, day of week, and it just needs a different unit of measurement, a day of week. So now we are redefining process trips and let us check the day of week of process trips. Right, numbers again, and these do look like days of week as numbers. Good. So we have added those two functions. So the next thing we may do is look into the global hour distribution. Can we do that? Right. So tablecloth provides those group by and aggregate functions, and we can use them. So um, we can group by the hour. And then aggregate. It's kind of similar to what you may do in, uh, you know, your uh, 
SQL queries, right? Grouping by and then summarizing somehow. And so here we aggregate by providing the names of the new aggregation columns and the functions defining them. And these functions, again, can be functions that uh, receive a whole data set. In this case, the whole data set they will be receiving is the group. And I will not spend too much time with it because there are great tutorials already about tablecloth and about grouping and all that. Oh, sorry. So row count is the thing we want. So we will count the rows in each group. Right? And you see, you have those counts. And now we can order by hour. And you have this hour distribution over the whole month. These are the, the hours by which, in which people tend to use bikes more and less. You see, in the night, less during the day, more and so on. And, and yeah, you should look those aggregate and group by up and, and group data sets. They are a central notion in tablecloth and, and uh, you know, understanding this concept, which is not complicated, is really valuable, probably. And, and so I'm encouraging you to, to look inside. So now um, let us visualize that. Can we, can we visualize it? Yeah, so to visualize it, we we'll use the amazing Hanami library and specifically the Nodge library offers a certain wrapper of Hanami, composes nicely with clay. So Nodge, uh, sorry, Cyclops Nodge, um, this namespace. Oh, sorry, as Hanami. This namespace will provide functions to turn uh, data sets into plots, basically, and we will use it in combination of Hanami's uh, templates. And Hanami's templates, you know, they offer different types of charts, uh, uh, basically, and, and many other nice surprises there. So let us do that. So maybe we'll copy this piece of code again and, and turn it to a, ha a Hanami plot. So we can use the Anami plot function, you see, it does compose nicely with table plot, and we need to provide a Hanami template, so a bar chart may be suitable for visualizing this kind of table we have here. Right? And then we need to bind our columns to the aesthetics of, of the plot, so the x-axis will be bound to our, and the uh, y axis will be bound to n and yeah again there are amazing tutorials to hanami already and so we'll not focus on that uh, today let us print this and see we are receiving this hanami uh, this sorry vega light specification which is the thing that hanami knows to generate great and let us visualize that to visualize it, we will use clay. So clay is this tool that allows you to use a namespace as a notebook and also to take one closure form or value and visualize it uh, as a single thing. So uh, when you have clay as a dependency in your Calva environment, you'll have those uh, additional actions. So uh, in the menu, you can look for Calva. Oh, sorry, Calva, custom REPL commands, and you see you have those clay commands. And we will use make current form as HTML. So, with this command, and uh, it should appear in the browser. It degenerates an HTML page with the visualized data that is one way we use clay and in a different editor you will have uh, some equivalent support uh, with similar actions 
And you know, typically uh, there are key bindings for this. So, for example, for what we just did, um, there is this uh, binding uh, in my keyboard. It is Control Alt Space and then comma. Uh, I think yeah, it should be here, and then we get it visualized, right? And also, Clay allows you to visualize the whole namespace as a notebook. So another command maybe just for fun i'm opening the menu again and you see it is in play make this as html and you see these custom repl commands are a nice calva notion you can read about them in the calva documentation they are really neat and um, you can find the calva uh, documentation all the details you need so great that is it. And by the way, behind the scenes, there is another library involved, and this is kindly. Kindly is a way to request certain kinds of visualizations. And your typical closure tools either understand kindly or probably have an adapter to kindly. So Clay does understand kindly. And, and to see that kindly is there, you can ask for the metadata of this structure we have created. And you see it says kindly, kind, kind Vega light. So yeah, it knows it is a Vega light plot. So that is why the tool can visualize it appropriately. And yeah, so maybe let us call it uh, hours plot. And yeah, and maybe just for, for, you know, for, for getting a sense of it, we can visualize the hours plot in a different way. You can, for example, say kind pretty print. But to do that, we need a kind namespace. So let us add kindly here. So you can say kind pretty print of this hours plot. And oh, let us send it to be visualized. Just key by. Yeah. So you see that is how it is pretty printed. So for example, you see the values, the data are represented as a CSV string that was done behind the scenes, and and that is specifically the Vega Light specification we have here. You can also view it. As a portal view, you have, you know, portal, this amazing data navigation library. So again, that is how it looks as a portal view. Okay. So you see, we don't have our distributions. Maybe before we continue, let us organize our notebook a little bit. You see, this namespace can be considered as a notebook. We can add markdown in comments, for, for example, say, um, yeah, you know, uh, analyzing the hours of Chicago bike trips and maybe let us say uh, this subsection is uh, the setup and this subsection is uh, reading data here we are processing data it, it, it is worth the time, you know, organizing your notebook and then you may say anal anal analysis. And yeah, so now if we re render the whole namespace, we have those uh, sections. And no, you may, may add some text. Um, can we distinguish weekends? from weekdays in terms of the hours in which people tend to use the bikes. Great. So let us continue now. And what we want to do is look into the, the days of the week, right? So yet another tablecloth pipeline uh, can help us. 
I'm week group by day of week and hour and come again. Let's see how it looks. Sorry. Yeah, I wish to learn this editor one day. Right, so you see those counts unordered, never mind for now. We can now group them the day of week again. And you see now we have a grouped data set and the groups are defined by the day of week and for each group you have uh, the data inside which is a whole data set for each group each group is basically a whole data set of the data for this group which are counts by hour in this day of week right so that is a group data set and thankfully our hanami wrapper knows how to uh, compose well with this uh, kind of pipeline and it knows how to handle grouped data set so let us see what happens if we do just the same as before. we want bar chart and we oh sorry bar, and we want it per group and that is kind of implied from the situation which is a grouped data set situation and that is typical to tablecloth you know you have group set you have grouped data sets and then many of your table functions will also uh, uh, behave accordingly acting inside each group so this plotting function behave behaves this way as well let us see what happens so it creates another data set but it's a data set with a column of plots so we can plot this data set so i'm sending it to the browser with a key binding you see the data set of plots and is considered a table you see we have this table view maybe we want to order by the day of week right we can do that because it is a data set right day of week Oh, sorry, key bindings again, I'm learning. Right, so now we have it. For every day of week, we have a plot. It is a data set of plots and it is visualized as a table. And yeah, can we guess which days are the weekends? I think we can, right? Because the the weekdays they have this peak probably people are going back home leaving the job or study or and so on and and this typically happens in 16 17 18 but the, the weekends are more smooth they don't have this peak it looks different and, and also the numbers are different and, and you know some so you see probably six and seven are saturday and sunday in in this as much as i know anything about chicago right so um yeah so maybe we can add a conclusion um weekends are different from week days in terms of the hours in which people tend to use their bikes. Let us render the whole next again. Also, key bindings again. So we did render the whole namespace again and here is our report. We just wish to put this report over the web. Maybe Yet another detail is that um, we are rendering it uh, directly as 
HTML. Clay also allows for using the Quoto publishing tool. So it can generate a Quoto markdown file that can then be converted to HTML like Quoto. And then you may enjoy some styling and lots of customization options. Let us do that. So it is, you know, just yet a um, REPL command. You see, there is another one for reveal.js uh, slideshows, which is not what we need at the moment. Um, let us create um, this plot. Oh, here is the browser tab. So this is how it looks when you render it through Quoto as HTML. And uh, I'll widen it a bit. So you see you have a table of contents and you have other stuff. Uh, and you can create whole books this way using book support. Maybe just for fun, let us try the other option of a reveal.js slideshow. So that is how it looks, you know, a reveal.js slideshow of our analysis. And you may need some style to make things render appropriately, but never mind. We can come back to the Quoto HTML rendering, which is our report. Now, what we need to do is publish that on the web. Let us do that. So we will create a GitHub repo. And uh, for this, we can go to GitHub Cycloge, for example. Uh, so this is the Cycloge organization. We'll create a repo there. So new repo under Cycloge. And we can call it um, Nodge Getting Started as we did call our project. We make it public and let us create this repo. And you know, you have those recommended commands to connect your project with the repo. Let us do that. So we we'll open the shell from within. Um, oh, sorry. From within. Oh. This code and then we can copy just copy these commands they seem okay for our situation they also create a readme and you know you add and commit, commit and push and all the necessary actions and and you have your repo with a readme file now let us carefully push the other things so to do that, we need a git ignore file so that we don't push into GitHub all the details which don't belong there. Uh, oh, so let us create a git ignore file and say yeah, CP cache Calva portal also if we have it uh, clay the temporary clay, clay files those quoto markdown files we don't need them and also and REPL port I guess these are the ones we wish to ignore yeah and under docs yeah, never mind. We did create some things which are not necessary. I, I'll erase them for now. Just cleaning up. And uh, Clay does provide some options to automatically clean up the docs directory, even though that is a bit risky. So uh, anyway, that is not our topic for today. I guess we can push it now. So yeah, so um, uh, we'll do it from the shell. We can just git add everything, I guess. Git uh... Oh, sorry. Add and commit, I think, this way. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot. So, yeah, so git add. Git ignore data 
steps.eden docs ssc git status yeah. git commit message uh, working analysis and git push so now we go to our um, repo and we need to set it up for github pages so first you need to set up github pages for your organization or for your user so you can look it up github pages getting started and and you you'll find the necessary details there and let us assume you've done that once so you have published something over github pages already still need to take care of this specific repo so let us do that so we go to settings pages and then we say we'll use the main branch and the docs directory which is where we put our target files rendered by a quarter and save this and now in the actions you can see it is working on page build and deployment so in a moment you will have the report public over the web and uh, maybe there is another detail worth mentioning and that is a clay configuration file so let us create it uh, oh am i uh, clay.eden and in this we may add a few options about the way uh, the whole clay project behaves and oh you see it has rendered so let us look so it should be ready over github pages so in this case it would be cycloge github io and then your project name nodge getting started yeah, it is here over the web, your report, right? So we have it with all the visual stuff, so on. Great. And so just let us talk a little bit about configuring clay. There are lots of options and I document them better. Some of them are documented, some need more care. One of them, which is relevant here, is setting up the repo information. Um, so you can say that it has a git URL, which is, um, oh, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, this is the git URL. And it has a branch where the relevant code lives and that is the main branch when we save it it can re-render our notebook let us go to our notebook again and re-render i use the key binding for quota rendering and we see it rendered so now you see at the bottom you have this link linking to the actual location of the source so if we click it and open tab with it so you see that you can find the source in github in the right uh, url and branch and all that so that, that's kind of important so let us let us push this detail as well uh, so git status hit add commit clay config and so git and docs index commit and now we can push so again this triggers the actions so that the newly rendered page is being deployed to github pages and in a moment it will be there and that will be our report 
and uh, later I will change a few details and also add a link to the video in the report so that everything is kind of self-contained. Um, but anyway, that was the session where we looked into a tiny data problem, the hour distribution of bike trips and try to distinguish weekends from weekdays. And I think we did discover something about them. There is yet a lot to explore about this data set and you may find some uh, academic research about and really nice blog posts and so on and, and we will keep using it in our study group, the real world data study group, which is very active these days. So yeah, it's done. So we can again look into the rendered page. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Notch getting started, and yeah, in a moment it will be there with some browser caching. I'm always confused about these details, but the new page is supposed to be here, and yeah, so you see now our published page does have a link to the source. So we may say we have done some self contained analysis on the raw data set to. A published report which was our goal for today thank you for listening please reach out if we can help you out in any way in your exploration and see you on the next times